welcome back to code studio and in this video we will be doing another mini project which is of an easy level DOM manipulation using vanilla JavaScript. So what a final products looks like is this. We would be having a button in the middle of a screen with a change color text written on it and guess what when we click on the button a random color is updated on the background in this way. Pretty cool isn't it? This is a basic DOM manipulation of the CSS of the body. This is the body and we are manipulating the document object model of this body by clicking on this button using vanilla JavaScript. So let's get started with the actual project we are gonna make. Let me create a folder named background color changer. Oh wait, I made it in my home folder. So let me change my directory to desktop and make a directory here. This is the project folder where our all code resides in. So let's change the directory into the given folder background color changer. And then I'll be creating a skeleton using index.html file, which I am just creating the basic file inside the project repository. And I'll also style it using style.css, a CSS file. I'll add the functionality using a script.js file. So these are the basic three files we have to work with when we are doing some manipulation on the DOM. Because we are not working with any of the front-end frameworks of JavaScript, we need the index.html, style.css and script.js file created by ourselves into the project repository. Let me move into my text editor. So the text editor I'm using here is a Visual Studio code. I have created these three files inside the project repository which are visible when I open the VS code inside the project folder. I would recommend everyone who's starting with working on vanilla JavaScript to use this thing called live server available on VS Code's marketplace. This extension hosts a local server where our code index.html gets served so that you don't need to refresh the page every time you change something in the code. This actually acts like a hot reload. Let's go back to our index.html file and to create a basic template of index.html let us add an exclamation mark that gives up an emit abbreviation of a HTML template. This is the HTML template pre-created for us using emit. So let me name the title of our application to something like BG color uh, changer. After updating the title, let us link our CSS file using the link command where I'll add the reference to style.css. Um. So we have linked our style.css file to our index.html. We should also link our script.js file to our HTML which we would do later. Inside the body tag we are adding a button that actually enables us to click something. So change um, rainbow. So I'm using rocket on my machine uh, that creates emojis that I can use and let me add an ID to this button something like change button. To get a clear understanding of how our application is getting built we will turn on the live server which will open on a port 5500 which is our default port and let me rescale my windows so that I can easily navigate and observe the differences what are happening. So when I have added a button, the button is automatically added. So let me actually remove the button and the button got removed from the live server and I haven't refreshed the page. It gets automatically refreshed when I save on the HTML file. The server gets reloaded automatically and a button got added. Let me also add a tag to body. Which actually means the container or something like that. Container. So let me add my script tag here. So type is text. JavaScript, source would be um, script.js. Okay, fine. So let's just add a little bit of styling to make our button somewhere in the middle of the page. Okay, I'll go to my style.css page, add some styling to my button. Since no, I've added the ID to be change button, right? So let me copy my ID and paste here the padding. Let me add some padding like 10 pixel and 15 pixel to make a flat button look more cleaner and let me add a pointer cursor to the button so that when I point 
on the button the pointer changes from normal cursor to a pointer right background color of the button to be pure white so that it will be clearly visible when I change the background color of the body to be black so let me first change the body's background color to back what was my ID uh, container right so container background color to be black and see I can clearly see the button here so when I'm clicking the buttons text is getting changed because the color is automatically set to default so let me set the color to be black so that when I click on it the text doesn't change or flicker between black and white and uh, let me align the button to be in center and add a padding on the top to be something like 25 percent um, see I got my button in the center of the screen when I change it to full screen okay let me go back and resize and work with it let me add some more attributes like uh, let me make my font size to be 15 pixel so that I can clearly see it and uh, let me align the text in here to be center and position to be relative let's Mm, this is enough of a styling because we are not dealing with the styling of the pages and we are not dealing with the UI UX project. This project is basically taken up to understand how the um, CSS DOM is changing and how we are manipulating using vanilla JavaScript. So let me go straight into my JavaScript file and add some functionality to our code. Since we have added IDs to our elements to get those L elements into our JavaScript code we will use something called document.get element by id so let me declare two variables using uh, esx method let uh, container equal to uh, document.get element by id and my id of the container is container and let button is equal to document dot get element by id and it's uh, something like change button right so how to know that i have got the uh, elements so let me add an event listener on the button that actually listens when the button is clicked on it when a button is clicked let me print some message on the console so let me open the console and keep it ready for work fine button on click uh, a function should execute here right when a button is clicked a function should get executed here so let me write that function here or let me call a function here but see we will not be using that function again on our code so it's um, somewhat ways to again declare a function and call it here so I'll use the anonymous function um, in an ESX way so fat arrow method so let me console dot log uh, button uh, the issue okay so the issue here is I have the added the button tag to be in a different way so when I click on the button a button clicked thing is visible here right I think you can observe this button clicked fine so our event listener is working fine so I have to write a code here that changes the background color right so the main crucial part of this program is to generate a random color. Generally people generate some random color. They give some uh, a list of colors or an array of colors ranging from red, blue, green, purple and whatever they can name. And then they pluck out some random color and then show it onto the screen. So we have only limited number of colors. So how to expand our horizon to actually have many colors that can randomly change. So this is initialized with a function. So let me give you a brief insight into what's an hex code. So hex code is something that a color is depicted with. It starts with an octothrope and has six digits after it. These six digits actually represent a hexadecimal number. That is why the name hex code came. So what's a hexadecimal number? Hexadecimal number is something that has um, numbers from zero to 16 but since we don't have numbers from 0 to 16 actually that can fit in a single digit 
they have created this 0 1 after 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 they have added letters a that depicts 10 b c d e and f that depicts 11 12 13 14 15 respectively a combination of digits from this whole string entered into this six digits generates a hex code that actually means a color right so a major task would be to generate a function that returns a random hex code so let me create a function make it like a random color and then so the basic idea would be I'll run a loop that actually pulls out some random number into the our main hex code and I'll start the hex code with an octothrope so let me start the hex code with an octothrope um, and then I'll append this hex code with some random digits of this hexadecimal number so let me denote it by hex treasure because this is a treasure for us let me copy this whole string i'll run a loop that actually pulls six times and then we have um, hex code I'll, i'm appending this hex treasure and index so this index must be a randomized number from 0 to 15 because the whole string takes indices from z starting from 0 to 15 at the end so i have to generate a random number that actually gives a random index that actually corresponds to a random letter and that finally leads to a random hex code and then random color obviously so math dot floor so math dot random and then i'll denote this with 16. so what this actually means is you generate a random number starting from 0 to 15. this is what this whole math dot floor until 16 actually represent so we have appended the hex code with six digits from this loop with six randomized digits of hexadecimal numbers from the hex treasure and I'll return the final hex code from this program and then we'll add on button click what happens is we have to change the CSS we have to manipulate the CSS DOM so container dot style actually pulls out the CSS property and then we'll add a property to be background um, color will change this property to some random hex code that random hex code is given using this function here so this should work well yes a code is running perfectly fine the button is in the center and when we press a change wait let me initialize this back to the black i am refreshing the server so that i get the initial state of the application and when i click the change a random color is generated see let me again refresh and start it will not come a purple most probably yeah it's a pink see when i again refresh a random color will be coming green so this is actually completely random that we have already discussed in the code and we were very successful in creating this stuff so summarizing what we have done until now we have created an index.html page wherein I have linked the CSS file and the JavaScript file where I have written a vanilla JavaScript code and then I have added a button to our program that actually has a text name change color and then I have added ID of container and change button that we are going to manipulate on and then in the style.css I have added some style attributes to look somewhat neater not completely cool this is a uh, basically a functioning video of or a functioning project so i haven't focused more on uh, styling the whole page we can style a little bit more i can add a rounded corners i can add animations to the button but that's not a main motto right so in the script.js i have created a random hexadecimal code that's a hex code that actually represents the color so this is the main implementation that we have to generate if we want a random color if you want some color from a list of colors then you can use an array of colors but uh, here we are generating some random color right see 
we are generating some infinite number of possibilities we have many pos not infinite we have some limited possibilities obviously but more than that you can list out in an array right and then we are manipulating the css dom by using dot style method and dot background color for changing the background color to some random hex code this is what we have done finally i hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this video if you have thoroughly enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe to code studio until then bye bye signing off sayankit code studio